Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, before um, I start the message this morning, let's uh, go to the Father in prayer. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity in allowing your servant to bring your message this morning. Bless us, Father, as we, we may understand the truth from your word. Melt us with your grace, mold us with thy image, fill us with your spirit, and use us, Father, as we give back the honor and glory. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Um, our text this morning uh, was read, and um, it's from Mark 1, verse 35. Um, it says, And arising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus departed and went down out to a desolate place. And there Jesus prayed. This morning, I would like us to consider prayer in a quiet time with God. As we go along with the message this morning, you will be hearing much encouragement about having a quality time, a quiet time alone with God in prayer and meditation. We are dealing with a lot of information lately on the news on the web, and from all other sources that can build stress and anxiety in us. Things that create a certain noise in our inner being and may affect our physical health and even might disrupt our spiritual focus. And since most of us are sheltered in, we should take this opportunity to take time and be still refocus on what is more important in our lives, our spiritual health. We will rediscover the importance of prayer in a quiet setting. So please bear with me as we continue. What is a prayer? A prayer is a solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God. In simple terms, prayer is a communication to God. A prayer can be spoken, can be in silence, or in a song. It can be used to praise God or to ask God for something, including help and forgiveness. Another uh, definition of a prayer it says, it is a sincere and sensible, affectionate pouring out of the heart and soul to God through Christ in the strength and assistance of the Holy Spirit for such thing as God has promised. I read this story about an old peasant who made an unusual request to his son as he, is, he lays dying. He asked his son to go into the best room of the house every day and sit there alone for half an hour. The son agreed to the strange request and promised his father that he would do what he had been told. After his father's death, the son kept faithful, faithful to his promise. He did this unusual thing, spending a half hour alone each day. At first, the time of quiet and solitude was uncomfortable. He became restless and anxious for the time to end. But over the weeks, that half an hour of solitude grew into a cherished and even transforming habit. He started to utter a prayer while in this solitude. The son looked forward to this brief quiet time each day and began to thrive on it. He began to experience deep 
and calming changes within himself. Reading this story reminded me of uh, our brother Cal. You've probably seen and heard Cal on one of our fellowships in his home after a good meal, sitting on his favorite recliner, facing the vast beauty of San Jose from his window, and then he'll tell you, it's time to meditate. Even if he really meant it's time to take a nap, or maybe he just wanted to tell you, don't bother me, I'm resting. But he seemed to practice this habit anywhere he goes. He told me one time that, try it, brother. He said, it's good for you. I know what he meant by that, but I didn't really even bother to take it seriously because I don't meditate. But this time, I would like to encourage everyone to develop a habit of quiet time. For those who are already doing it, you can attest from the experience of how it changed your perspective in your daily walk with the Lord. It could be any time of the day where you, could, you can set aside few moments of your time and seek for the Lord. For me, I prepare spending my quiet time in the morning when everybody is still sleeping. I try to isolate myself and spend a quiet moment alone with God. As I go to Him in prayer, read His words, and reflect on them. Just talking to the Father and thanking Him for the blessings of another day of life and experiencing his blessings. In the Bible, we will find several situations where Jesus finds time to meditate and pray in solitude. For it is important to him to have a constant contact with his Father in heaven. Let us take a look at some of these moments and the importance they present. On uh, Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses 1 to 15, Jesus pray in solitude to prepare for a major task. After Jesus was baptized, he went into solitude in the wilderness for 40 days, praying and fasting. He took time to prepare himself for his ministry talking to his father through prayers and fasting for strength, for wisdom and guidance. He was tempted, tempted and tried at this time. In spite of his physical condition at this moment, he remained rooted with the words of God and defeated the temptation. The same thing we can do at the beginning of our day. Let us develop a habit of seeking God first through prayers and His written words to guide our way for all the day's work. Another example is found on Mark 6, verses 30 to 32. Here, Jesus advised his disciples to take a rest for strength to recharge after hard work. When Jesus sent the 12 disciples out to do ministry, and when they returned, he encouraged them to separate from the people who were following them to rest. There's nothing like a quiet and peaceful moment and place to rest your weary mind and body after a hard day's work. Even Jesus encouraged his disciples to take a rest and regain energy, to recharge. Even our cell phones, when charging them, are placed in an isolation on its charger. 
just leave there leave it there alone until it's full same as our physical well-being we need to rest that's the reason why god created the sabbath for our benefit all work for six days and on the seventh day he gave us rest rest to have time to think about god and for his goodness On Luke 6, 12 to 13, Jesus went to the mountain to pray for guidance before making an important decision. It says, in these days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. And when the day came, he called his disciples and choose from them twelve, whom he named apostles. We will see here that before choosing his apostles, Jesus spent time alone praying, praying to his Father for wisdom to choose the right people that will be his front man to his ministry. Jesus, the Son of God, asking for guidance from the Father in heaven, to make an important decision. How much more we need this time to approach our God in heaven when making important decisions in our life. Jesus prayed because of his dependence and his obedience to the Father. He said, By myself, I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. John 5.30 Another example is found on Luke 22, 39-44. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives to pray in submission in a time of distress and grief. Before his arrest, he came out and went, as was his costume, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. He told them to wait for him and pray, while he went far from them and isolated himself so that he could also pray for himself. You know the, the story of how Jesus prayed so hard, where even an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. He was in agony and so distressed that his sweat became like drops of blood falling down to the ground. Do we realize the importance of his solitude during this hour of need? When we face heavy trials and grief, always come to the Father in prayer with total submission and all your anxiety with all your care, leave them to his mercy seat and he will take care of it. And lastly, on John 17, verse 11, Jesus prayed for others. Jesus prayed for his disciples, for all the believers, and for everyone who will believe in the gospel. We must remember that our prayers can be interceding for others' benefit. Praying for one another works. We will see that Jesus prayed often and consistently in order to maintain our relationship with the Father as His children. Consistent and fervent prayer is essential. From uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. All of the day's care is taken care of after that brief moment of solitude with our Father in heaven. 
you become confident that God will guide your way for the day, full of contentment and full of His goodness. Once you develop a daily habit of quiet time in prayer, your heart will yearn for it. And you'll be amazed of how God will work on your day. Once again, I urge you, parents and grandparents, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, to get into a habit of having a quiet time and feel the presence of our God in your lives as we draw near to Him in prayer. It will develop and enhance our faith that will lead to a fruitful Christian life and allow God to transform us into the image of His Son. Apostle Paul tells us on 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, he says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. During this time of uncertainty, let us allow ourselves to rest from all the worries and anxiety that is surrounding us. Let us reconnect to God and be still. The only way that we may be able to hear God's voice is to keep silent. We need to isolate ourselves in quietness and solitude, free from distractions. Our Lord Jesus Christ is our model and our example. Remember that God speaks to us in silence if we only learn to listen. He answers our prayers in a quiet and humble way. Spending quiet, quality time with God will result in a better quality of life, a godly life. I would like to share an excerpt of a prayer entitled The Deeps, taken from the book Valley of Vision. And uh, it will be our prayer to close our lesson this morning, after which will be our invitation. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, give us a deeper knowledge of thyself as our Savior, as our Master, as our Lord and our King. Give us a deeper power in private prayer, more sweetness in thy word, more steadfast grip on its truth. Give us a deeper holiness in speech, in our thoughts, in our actions, and let us not seek moral virtue apart from thee. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. We would like to extend our invitation for those who haven't yet received the gospel of Jesus. This is the time to be saved. Turn away from your sins and sin no more. Accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord and be baptized into his fellowship. This is the time. Do not delay. For tomorrow may be too late. Or, or if there's anybody who needs some prayers, Please let us know and we can all pray for you as together we sing our invitation song.